In this video, we'll be looking for what exactly is a text checkpoint. How do we work on the text checkpoint? Now, what exactly is a checkpoint is first thing is checkpoint is checking whether the expected result is equal to actual result. That is what a checkpoint. On which object do you want? Do you want on a text object? Do you want on bitmap object or some other object? So right now in UFT, what we usually do is we try to do a functional testing itself. We only check the functionalities of the application. For example, you check a drop down, you check a date field, you check a button, radio button, checkbox and so on. But you never care about checking whether there is a text field which is present, a text which is properly present. Okay, This text is present properly or not. So every time when I do a testing on the same application, I want the same text should be repeated every now and then. Okay, So for that, I need to apply a text checkpoint. right? So this will make sure okay, along with the functional testing, I am also able to do this text uh, checkpoint testing also. right? So let us see that. Now, in this example, I will just record a sample application, the same sample application and I'll put a checkpoint on this John Smith. So every time when I log into this place, John should John Smith should be present properly. So let us see that how do we go for it. So I'll just close this right now, the sample application. And I'll create a test here in the solution untitled. I'll create a new test, right click on that place, solution explorer, add, add a new test. And I'll give the name of the test as text checkpoint. The name would be as text checkpoint underscore checkpoint and I'll click on add. So once I click on add, I'll get a message creating text checkpoint test itself. So in this place, I've come here in the action pane. Now I'll just click on this record. Since I know how to record the sample application, I'll directly go to Windows application, click on this plus sign, the sample application URL and the folder is given here. I'll just click on OK and I'll click on apply OK. So once I click on apply OK, the window will get opened if you see this one and the recording toolbar is also visible. So window will open here and now what I'll do is I'll enter some details here. I'll just enter here as the John and I'll enter the password capital HP and click on OK. Remember when I'm doing a recording at the back end, scripts are generated. Now when I come to this place, I'll just select instead of London, I'll select some other value. I'll select as Paris. Instead of Paris, I'll select something as uh, Frankfurt. Okay. Now, after selecting few things, now I'll put a text checkpoint on this John Smith. How do I insert it? When you have this recording toolbar, the second last option, if you see, it says there are so many checkpoints, standard checkpoint, standard output, bitmap and text checkpoint. I'm interested in text checkpoint. So I have to select that checkpoint. The moment I click on the text, text checkpoint, this UFT will minimize. Okay. So you can see here. If I click on that, please, the UFT will minimize. It will ask me, where is your text? Which exactly is your text? So if I click on that using my mouse, okay, if I click on this place, this object, the text will be captured. So it says that is a parent object is HP MyFlight sample application and the child one is John Smith, which is given. So I'll click on OK. Once I click on OK, you see it says check that John Smith is present or not. It is displayed or not. The text which is given as John Smith is in the red font itself. OK, so I can if you want, you can change that John Smith because it, you can also parameterize that. But right now we'll keep it very simple. The same John Smith and few checkbox are given. Do you want match case, small case or you can say exact match, text not displayed and so on. After that, if you see this checkpoint timeout 10 seconds by default the timeout is 10 seconds why do we need this checkpoint timeout not every pc is very fast not every laptop is very fast so you have to give some time to load the application sometimes from going from one page to another page it takes some time so for the safer side we have given the time as 10 seconds so it will wait for 10 seconds okay uh, after 10 seconds if it is not able to find out it will throw an error within 10 seconds if it is able to find out it will just go to the next step right so even if it finds one second two second it will skip the step i mean it will follow the step and go to the next step now i'll just click on ok so once i click on ok a script will be generated for checkpoint now you observe here if i click on ok a script will be generated john smith so i'll just move this window down so that you can see that WPF object John Smith check checkpoint and that's a checkpoint given here right now the script is generated so obviously there might be something in the object repository there's a reference created for this checkpoint properties okay so we'll see that where it is after that I'll just click on this find flights okay and I'll close the application I don't want to work more than that 
click on close the application and now I can click on this stop recording. So once I click on stop recording, it will come back to the original window itself, right? So what we have done is I've inserted a text checkpoint on this place on the image itself on the text John Smith that will be stored in the object repository. The shortcut to open the object repository is control R from a keyboard. So I'll press control R from a keyboard. And this is the object repository. So if you see there's a checkpoint and output objects, the first checkpoint object is John Smith. So if I click on that John Smith, it's the same window when I started recording the, when I started capturing the text checkpoint. So you can see that same thing. After that, I can just click on this. Okay. Close button. Okay. So this is done here. Now what I'll do is I'll just simply execute it. I can just press, I can just click on this run button from this place and I'll click on run. So once I click on run, you see at the back end, yellow color line, yellow color line, in the sense it is executing the particular step. After that, finally, when it is done, you'll get the results pane. Okay. So that is UFT report text checkpoint result one. If I'm executing for second, third, fourth time, the result two, three, four will keep on coming here. After that, once I finish that, you see, these are the options. These are the steps which have been passed. So if you are interested in any step, let's say I want to see the text checkpoint. That was the text checkpoint John Smith. Okay. That has been passed. If I want to verify what exactly it has passed. So you can see on the right hand side, the text checkpoint is nothing but John Smith. The description is given here. Okay. And it has been passed. So there's nothing more definition uh, description given. If it fails, it will give you the reason why it failed itself. So this is the way you can insert a text checkpoint. Now let's see one more example. If I want to fail the checkpoint, how it works like that. Okay. So for that, I'll just go to this place in the script itself. Okay. Now I'll open the object repository. Control R is the shortcut to open object repository. After that, I'll just click on this John Smith. Okay. And if I change this John Smith, this is nothing but an expected result. I cannot change the actual result. That's a sample application. I don't have the access for the code. So what I'll do is better. I'll change the expected result. So if I say instead of John Smith, I want as John to Smith. Okay. Just some spelling I'm changing here. John to Smith. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll select that click on this close button. Now the object repository, the test object reference have been changed test object have been changed, the, the runtime object will not match with it. So it will throw me an error. So let us see that. And now I'll just click on this run button and click on this run. So let's see what happens. It will come in the execution mode. And if you see that's a yellow line at the back end, so it is executing and it will come and stop at that place because the checkpoint will not be correct. Okay. So if you see it has come and stop at this place. So if you see here, that's nothing but check checkpoint. So the check checkpoint timeout is nothing but 10 seconds. So it will wait for a particular 10 seconds within 10 seconds. If it gets, it will, you know, pass it. If not, after that, it will show as fail. Okay. So if you see here text checkpoint, that's a result too. And it has shown as fail. Now it says error list. What is the error list? Text checkpoint John Smith have been failed. I want to know the reason on the right hand side. If you see the reason would be given here. Yeah. So it says text checkpoint that is John Smith and the text is given here and the details are given. Okay. And if I click on this image, it will give me the snapshot. It says John Smith is given here. Whereas on the other side, there was something else expected. So I'll just press escape. Now I'll go back to this place as test flow in this test flow. If you see, I'll just go back to this text checkpoint, which is given as John Smith. So on the right hand side, I'll get the checkpoint details entirely. And if I keep on scrolling at the bottom like this, so now you can see that's expected versus actual. So it says the expected was nothing but John to Smith and the actual result is given as John Smith. So therefore the reason it's saying as it has been failed text checkpoint has been failed. So I hope you're able to understand how to insert a checkpoint into your application, how to verify whether it is passed or not, how to modify the text checkpoint properties and how do we make it fail. I've made the uh, expected result as fail and I've got the answer as fail itself. So I hope you have understood and that's all for this video.